All right. Um, welcome to today's um, lecture. We have what we call the company related inbound flow of goods and services, which can be controlled. For instance, when we talk about procurement, it's like buying. You buy, you procure. Then when you procure, then you, you are supplied with the goods or the services or the materials. So the control supply of products, you have to control it. You don't let loose. They put control there so that everything will be done efficiently and effectively. If you don't control it, instead of 10, it can be 16. Instead of five, it can be 10. So there must be controlled supply of the product you are talking about, the services you want, the material and the auxiliary material. And that is what we call procurement. So in an exam, when you are asked what is procurement, this is what you should be looking at. Procurement includes all the activities relating to ordering, to order the goods, from the source, you get a supply, you receive the goods, you inspect them whether they are in good condition, you plan for it, and the information that comes with the goods, you, you process it so that the goods can become holistic or uh, in, in good condition, which are necessary for the supply of the product, services, material to another company if you don't have this control to sub to, uh, over the supply so that you get the right information to process for instance if your company is supposed to supply a raw material to another company and you have to go and buy you do procurement and they will have to supply you with the raw material and for you to be able to supply this person. So we talk about you go and order, you get a supply and you receive it. You inspect to see whether it's in good condition and then you plan and get the information process. Then we also have the controlled Manufacturing of product services is called production. So in the same vein, look at it from that angle. We are talking about production processes. Includes all the activities. Don't forget about the control. All the activities involved with the receiving of materials and auxiliary material. They are transformation into products or services, inspection, planning, and information processes in order to offer products and services that can be distributed. So take note of the definition of production also. Then take note of the definition of stock keeping then in the same vein, take note of transportation, distribution. Another well-known term in logistics is distribution. When you acquire something, you have to distribute it. So the word distribution is actually used to express the controlled. So you see control storage and transport of products from the supplier to the client. Take note. It differs from transport, so distribution is not the same as transport. In that distribution includes the control storage, so you keep the goods of the products and the services. So look at it properly and then know the difference that distribution is not the same as transport. The difference here is that you 
storage is part of transportation and you have to move these goods from the storage and by transporting them to somebody so transport differs from distribution then in case where supplied items or part thereof need to be returned to for the following reasons like packing i was telling you about where there's a compromise on the packaging material or the packing has been compromised there is a dent there is some damage the packing is not done well packaging material destroyed superfluous stock or articles without a money back guarantee these activities are generally known as return flow when these things happen the item has to be returned to where it comes from where you cannot vouch for the source then we have you didn't buy or they just added it you need to get the understanding back money back guarantee or they stole the thing and just put for you no those things are not you are giving what you paid for unless otherwise there's that agreement that one will also be well documented otherwise when you are supposed to take 30 boxes and 100 boxes have come then there's a problem somewhere which has to be investigated now look at logistics subsystems we have supply logistics production logistics distribution logistics return logistics so when you look at the arrow in the logistics subsystems the green one talks about procurement markets so the first line from where the green line takes its source from the top it means you procure you order the goods and you get the items procured then these items you have procured must be supplied the production line so there something will be done on it so yeah you see transportation in the supply then but remember distributions transportation are not the same so production logistics then comes after the supply has come they produce if they are producing and there's a problem this arrow which has double end it means that it must come to return logistics or even if there's in the supply there is some anomaly to come back to return logistics then when you move from production you go to distribution logistics where after products have been manufactured they have to be distributed that brings you to the market when you get to the market and there's some anomaly or a non conformance product then it comes back to return logistics they are returning the product and then that will take you to the procurement market where these goods are procured. so the arrow takes you and then explain itself from green logistics supply or supply logistics it moves to production from production to distribution 
along the line, if there are some anomalies or there are some untoward issues this, it, uh, detected, they will ensure that those things which are not conforming come back to retain logistics. And so those that conform will get to the market for sale. But even in the market, if there are some non conformances they will come back to return. And then from there, it goes to procurement logistics. Now, that is the chart talking about logistics subsystems or it includes procurement, production, distribution, and retail. So you can read these examples. They talk about logistics subsystems. The example that you have in supply logistics, automotive logistics, and they explain it, those activities that take place then we have production logistics, like in the steel plant logistics. Then distribution, like foodstuff distribution, then return logistics for the recycling of those things that when you go to the field, you see some boys collecting old metals, old rubber materials, trying to sell them. They are going to recycle them. They are retaining them because they are spoiled. They are not conforming. Some of the things even get spoiled before they get to the market. But after they go to the market and they are used, or some of them are not even used, they have to come back to the plant for recycling. 